Hello everyone, this video is going to be about the story of how I got into medical school and I promise you if you watch the whole thing you will not be disappointed because the way that I got into medical school is so unique and so different that I guarantee you will not hear any other story like it. We travel back to the long distant era of 2018 when life was much simpler and 17 year old me was applying to medical school. I went to a standard state sixth form in my hometown and by the time of application which was October or mid-October for me I had very good forecast grades of 4A stars and by this point I had already sat the UK CAT as it was known then now it's called the UCAT, which is one of the medical entrance exams, and I had done all right. I also had a really good personal statement, which was double checked by faculty members in my school, as well as some external people and some family. The A-levels I did were maths, further maths, physics, and chemistry, which are not your typical medicine subject choices to do. Usually people would have biology, but I was difficult and I wasn't sure whether I wanted to do biology or not. So instead I opted to do further maths over biology. I applied to four medical schools. I applied to Bristol Medical School, Edinburgh Medical School, Cambridge University, uh, specifically Trinity College, and I applied to Leeds Medical School. And for my fifth non-medicine option, I didn't really know what else to do because I was sort of on the fence about what I wanted to do if I didn't get into medicine because I wasn't sure if I wanted to do something like biochemistry or bioscience or straight up natural sciences. I really wasn't sure and at the time I also really liked coding. I still do, but I liked coding and computer science more then. So for my fifth option, I applied to the University of Edinburgh to do computer science. After some time, I sat the BMAT, which is the other medical entrance exam, and I had gotten the results back, and they were pretty damn good. I was very, very happy with all the work that I'd put in and the results I had achieved. Sadly, however, also at this point, I had managed to get rejected from Bristol pre-interview, and I had managed to get rejected from Edinburgh straight up. Because at this point in time, I when I applied, this was the last year that Edinburgh Medical School didn't do medical school interviews. You either applied and got in or rejected. And I was one of the ones who got rejected. Interestingly though, I did get an offer to study computer science. My conditions were three A's with one A in maths. And it was very odd because my personal statement was completely oriented to medicine. In fact, I heard only one line really relating to computer science. I talked about coding as a hobby and skill that I did outside of medicine, and yet my application was enough to get me an offer for computer science, which I thought was really strange. A week after my BMAT results were released, I got a letter in the post saying that Cambridge Trinity College would like to interview me. And a month later, I went to the interview, and the short of it is, was I found it really fun, it was really enjoyable, I had a laugh, and it was overall a good experience. Especially because I also had two friends at the time who were also applying, so I got to go with them and have a nice day out in Cambridge. If you want to know a bit more about what my interview was like, I did a video on it a few months back, so you can go click the card there? There? Somewhere you can go see what my interview experience at Cambridge was like. A few weeks later, and a lot of nervous waiting, I heard back that I managed to get an offer from Cambridge to study medicine for the following academic year. In fact, uh, here is my offer letter that I managed to keep after all these years, and it says, I'm delighted to write you a place to study medicine next year, and then there's the Trinity College insignia with the date on there. Safe to say I was absolutely over the moon, mainly because I had gotten one place to study medicine, which meant that when I did my exams in the following few months, I would have something really to look forward to, and if I got the grades, something which would be amazing. I didn't really care at this point 
because I had gotten at least one medicine offer because that's all you need. After this, I got invited for interview at the University of Leeds. So I went up there and had my interview. And the short of that was, I am not very confident with my MMI. I much prefer panel style interviews, sitting down and talking with someone. So safe to say I was a little bit out of my comfort zone. And um, I guess the people there didn't really approve of me wearing jeans and a t-shirt to my interview. If you want to hear more, I also did a video of that. Uh, link should be somewhere on screen. A few weeks after that, I heard back from Leeds and I was rejected, which didn't feel too bad because I still had one offer to study medicine. So I was still very much optimistic about my chances of going to medical school. Now that I'd gotten all of my offers or potential offers back, I went to my UCAS application and I firmed Cambridge Medicine and I had Computer Science at Edinburgh as my backup. I did say that this was a really weird story about how I got into medical school. More time had passed and A-levels had started and finished and overall everything was good. I had studied very hard and I thought I had done really well in my A-levels and I thought, you know what? On results day, everything will be fine and I will go into medical school. Boy, I was wrong. On results day, I logged into UCAS track and there it was, my offer saying I had gotten accepted to do computer science at Edinburgh. Now you may be thinking, what? When I opened that and saw that, my heart sunk to the floor. I was absolutely distraught that I did not get into medical school. And at this moment in time, during the course of A-levels, I had decided that I really didn't want to study computer science at all because I thought, you know what? A-level maths is enough maths for me. I'll leave it there. When I went into school to officially collect my grade letter thing, which showed me what I got in all of my subjects, I had managed to get A, 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 B, with the B being in further maths. And this was obviously not the conditions needed for my medical school offer. So I went straight to the exams office and I tried to get things remarked because I was only two marks off an A star, which would have made my requirement in two subjects. So remarking and getting in was a very feasible option for me. So whilst I did that, I called up Cambridge Medical School and said, yo, I'm getting my papers remarked. Can you please, you know, keep that in mind and expect a call from me sometime in the future. Even me telling this story now, it's still really weird to hear it out loud. Whilst things were getting remarked, I was continuing my summer holiday and I was not enjoying any of it because I was just worrying that the remarks wouldn't go my way or if the remarks did go my way, I would have to plan everything for medical school. Basically, my situation post results day was completely volatile. I had absolutely no idea what was happening with my life. I also found it really difficult to enjoy things with my friends because the majority of them had actually gotten into university. And I, having studied all through A-levels, had gotten Admittedly, very decent grades. AAAB is nothing to laugh at. They are very difficult grades to get. However, for me, that meant not going to university at all. So, safe to say I was just completely all over the place. That summer as well, I went to Reading Festival 2019 and I volunteered my time there because I wanted something a bit different to do that summer, something to get my mind off of things and, you know, listen to some cool bands. 1975, Two Door Cinema Club, Wombat, Post Malone, God, who else was there? Dave, AJ Tracy. There were loads of people there. It was a great time. And whilst I was there, I had gotten a call that my grades had been remarked and my grades had gone up, Hooray! which I thought, oh my God, this is it. And my grades went up to A star AAA, with the A star 
being in maths. And very, very crucially, I had gotten an A in chemistry and physics. However, I was one mark off an A star in both of those subjects. And I calculated this later on. That is equivalent to 0.37% off my medicine medical school offer requirement. So with this in hand, I thought, you know what? Maybe there's a chance. I called up the medical school and said, hi, I am one A-level mark off. I know I haven't met the requirements, but is there any way you could let me in? And they said, sorry, we've given your place to someone else. You can't be let in. There are two things that are important to understand here. One is that this was the first and only year that Cambridge had done something called adjustment. And this is the process whereby if you get grades which are higher than your expected grades and you had already been rejected for interview, there was a chance that you could be given a place at university depending on how many people made their offer requirements. So my space was given to someone else who had managed to like get their grades and meet the offer requirements. Secondly, what's important to remember is that back then, medical school places are controlled by the government. They're not the same as other university courses. So there is a, or there was, a governmental cap on how many medical students each university could have. And because they'd given my place to someone else and they'd filled their quota, they legally weren't allowed to take in any more medical students. This is no longer the case. They have increased the cap and they have much more control at a university level, but back then it was very, very strict. And at this point, it was pretty much the nail in the coffin for me getting into medical school that year. I was just destroyed on the floor. It was horrendous. You wouldn't have wanted to be me at the time. However, I didn't completely give up hope. I thought, you know what? I'm going to apply next year. I'm gonna resit my exams. I'm gonna do it all over again. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get into medical school and I'm also gonna get some experience by getting a job in my local hospital and you know, doing the whole resit thing. I was, I was distraught, but I was ready to go through it all again. So that's exactly what I did. I started off by sitting the UCAT straight after I had gotten completely rejected from medical school. And at this point, you're probably really tired at the series of events that have happened in my life up to this point, and so was I. So at this point, I had taken a little holiday up to Edinburgh. Now, Edinburgh is one of my favorite cities because it has big city vibes, but also it has a lot of space in it and it feels very European as opposed to London, which is a big city, but everything's sort of very cramped. I love Edinburgh, the views are great, the scenery is great, everything just seems really good about Edinburgh. And one of my favorite parts is Edinburgh Gin. It's fantastic. And whilst you're there, you can actually take a tour of the distillery that they have in the city. So that's exactly what I did. I was a bit of a chemistry geek. In fact, you could see the distilling machine that they had and it looked like all the diagrams that I had seen in A-levels and my exam papers of what dis dis distillation equipment looked like for real. And I thought, whoa, this is so cool. And I sat down and they gave us a talk about how they add all the flavors, how they add all the textures, all, you know, the whole making process. The reason this part of the story is important is because whilst I was getting that talk, my phone started to ring and I was very nervous because my phone never rings, no one ever calls me. And it was a message from my dad and my mum saying that Leeds Medical School had tried to contact me. So safe to say, as soon as I got that, my heart started racing. What on earth could they be contacting me for? They rejected me almost six months ago. So after the tour was finished, I stepped outside to a local Starbucks, received a call from the head of admissions at the medical school at Leeds, and she said on the phone, would you like to study medicine next academic year? Yes or no? 
And I obviously said yes. And a week later, I found myself sitting in the medical student lecture theatre, listening to all of the introductory lectures and listening to the Dean tell stories about his time at the medical school. When I got that call and I'd gotten into medical school, my brain was very, very melty. It was completely soup and I had absolutely no idea what was going on in my life at that point. I was so confused. And here I am now. I am a second year medical student studying at the University of Leeds and I managed to get into medical school this way. I did promise you that this story was going to be very strange and you would not hear one like it. Now that you've listened to my entire story, I hope you enjoyed it because it was really, really weird to tell it all to a camera, but I do want you to take away a few things from this. The first is that make sure you get any contextual factors that may increase your grades done before your exams. If I had done this, it would have made my application to medical school a little bit more streamlined. And then make sure you get all your papers remarked if you think there's a chance of you making your offer if you've missed it by a few marks. The third and most poignant point I'd like to make is that if you really do want to get into medical school, if you really do want to put all of that work in and become a doctor and do all the things that this type of medical professional does, then you will get in. It may not be the normal way of getting in, the traditional way I should say, but you will get in because all medical schools are looking for the people who put in hard work, who put in time, who put in effort, and who have the skills and qualities that they need of good doctors. It is as simple as that. I know what it's like to receive an offer to study at Cambridge, and medical school for that matter. I also know what it's like to get rejected from medical schools. I also know what it's like to study really hard and on results day have absolutely no idea where to go because no university had accepted them. I also know what it's like to sit there at day one of medical school listening to all of the introductory lectures and starting the five, six year journey to become a doctor. The only difference for me is that I had all of that happen in about the span of a month. So that is it. I hope you finished your tea because I have been talking so much that I forgot to drink some of it. Oh, green tea is so good. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.